All right, well, I'm um, sitting here with uh, Alika Alvarez, uh, uh, Freddie Scheinfeld, and Joe Dueck, and we're here to talk about um, Kingdom of Plants in 3D, which all three of you worked on the score. And, uh, well, just first off, how do you all know each other? How'd you guys meet? Um, well, actually, you know, I worked it together for quite a long already because, I mean, uh, um, Four Kids Entertainment is a company who does a lot of animation, so mm -hmm. Joel was a composer over there, and Fe Freddie Scheinfeld and myself, we were working together in many of those cartoons. So we're kind of collaborating. Joel was living in New York, and we're mm -hmm. here in L.A., so, you know, that's the way we met. You know, we met through 4Kids Entertainment, and then, then Joel, you know, he started getting a lot of projects with this company, Atlantic Productions, and he invited us a couple of times to work with him. And for us, you know, of course, I mean, it's just a pleasure, you know, to, to collaborate with, you know, with, uh, with people that you like. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the best thing that could happen, you know, when you actually get respect, you know, who you're working with, and uh, and especially as a person, you know, I mean, yeah, we're a great composer, we're a good composer, mm -hmm. or you want to call it, but, uh, you know, it's just it's a lot of respect involved, and uh, all the projects we have done together, you just come to that. I mean, a lot of respect, and that's, that's how it happened. <laughs> yeah, we also, when we started as for kids, it's, uh, it's pretty intense, you know, <laughs> when this for cartoon, it's, it's, it's really, it's like everything else, it's like, oh, a movie. <laughs> and and uh, so, we, yeah. yeah, so we, we, so vacation. we yeah. vacation. you really get to, 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 to get in, into a point that you can, you learn to collaborate very well because, you know, it's, it's yeah. so much music you have to play it. And, uh, and, and so we call it like the four kid uh, school of music uh -huh. because uh, we, you know, so we, we have a system, even though we, we, we haven't worked together before the documentaries and all that. We kind of we started working and oh yeah we do things this way very efficient very you know so we, we yeah. it was very easy to mm -hmm. to, to, to to click to, you know, yeah to click mm -hmm. yeah. you know even things like naming tracks <laughs> and uh, using the FTP <laughs> sites in a certain structure and um, but also you know if, for example one of them would write a theme you know a motif and something like that for a character and then that would be uploaded and we'd all have to listen to that and say okay now we need to incorporate that theme into mm -hmm. what we do. Um, so thematically we would work together and you know sometimes it's kind of like volleyball and even on this project you write a theme and you kind of throw it across and the ball yeah. that comes back is stuff's different so like, yeah, this yeah. is what you've done with <laughs> and I think that's really interesting and you've taken this direction and that so there's a lot of interplay from that point of view but also from the point of view of sound and palette mm -hmm. that uh, we were able to in a sense because we kind of grew together mm -hmm. through uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Ninja Turtles and the other projects that we're able to match each other's sounds and style to some extent um, in a way that uh, you know was very effective because mm -hmm. in these kinds of things you really need everything to feel like it's coming from the same place yeah. um, and so that's something you know even coming to this project that you know we're very aware of and we get together to say okay what's our palette and um, how are we going to approach you know the, the various challenges of it's always the same challenge of how to make something sophisticated um, emotionally stirring but at the same time contemporary mm -hmm. so that you know whoever it is Discovery Channel History Channel are not gonna think you know this is gonna turn off our audiences right yeah that. so um, likewise it's been a very good um, experience since the start of working with these guys and you know and you just have to be you know if I'm bringing the project to the get to the table or they bring a project you just have to know that you can rely on these people ultimately without supervision because mm -hmm. I'm also writing music, they're also writing music. We don't really have, uh, it's very hard to be the, the supervisor at the same time. So mm -hmm. this is why I love working with them because I basically just get, click send. It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. And, and you don't find that quite often, to be honest with you. And, and I think that you're all saying a very important point. We know how to you know, digest themes and palettes right. and the way things sound and the way Freddie writes and your writes. Of course, we have, if you hear, and I, I know you heard the, the, yeah, the score, yeah. Everybody has something that is different, but yeah, yeah. it's a score. I mean, it's if a you play from it's a cohesive score. thing. Yeah, yeah. A, and you know, you hear thematic ideas, and you know, uh, something that I really like, there is no ego involved. I mean, it's what it is. I mean, we, and that's what I want to bring the, the word respect, I and mean, we respect each other so well that that's why the result is so positive. I mean, when mm -hmm. you get and sit down and listen to the score, uh, I mean, there is something really good about it because, I mean, that's the way it was created. I mean, we all sat, as you all said, mm -hmm. you know, we sat down and discussed what can we do over here, and all the ideas all the time are really positive, and you know, we can say, yeah, not too crazy all this and things right. like that, but 
I think that we are doing it, but it's not that easy, in my opinion, you yeah. know, to actually get a group of people that you feel that comfortable, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, so, that's yeah, that's a big point about the trust, because, I, like, uh, you know, Alec and I been working for 10 years together, yeah. and, uh, and basically, if, I, if I'm doing a project and, uh, you know, he's doing one queue and doing, uh, uh, I know that he was, he's going to deliver, it's going to be great. He know that what I'm gonna deliver is is gonna it's gonna work. Like it's it's, it's that trust. Like you know, yeah, go ahead. I don't mm -hmm. have to he listen to what you did. We don't have to listen to each other except <laughs> for you know when I started a project for the style or whatever. But uh, but to get to that point is very hard. Like we we you know we're trying. Sometimes we try to find other people you know to interpret. You have a lot of a project, a lot of projects, and to yeah. do more collaboration is is hard. And and you all when we start, I think it's the first time that we feel oh now we have you know yeah I mean, we can we can really and trust uh, uh, to, to you know the same to say the same degree and, and it's that it's three people working towards one goal i mean i i always felt like that it's that's the way it feels you know we want to do it and you know uh, and 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 again there it shows in the result it shows yeah. in the result the music's not like okay yeah I use this and all right whatever i don't know what you're doing i mean you really feel it, it just felt like that and uh you guys you guys each have your own um, separate studios. Are, are you? Yeah, yeah. Are you guys in close proximity to each other? Like, uh, are you? Guys well, we 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 never were. Yeah, you know, I was in New York, <laughs> right. and um, <laughs> the clients are in London, yeah. and um, uh, and these guys in Pasadena, and you know that worked fine. You uh -huh. know, no, no problems there. But um, you know, I moved here just last March, and. I think that was part of the fun of it. Is like yeah. now I can come and sit at their tables, yeah, in their yeah. studios, and we, you know, um, I think there are advantages of being, you know, able to kind of, you know, as we did, you know, work in the studio together. These guys basically, because of their experience in LA and their knowledge of the studios, and musicians were able to bring that side of things to the table. Mm -hmm. But um, um, there are advantages to to kind of being nearby because we can go and eat tacos late at night <laughs> and, and, yeah, exactly. and things like that but you know uh, but we we've also been used to working at a distance and particularly on this project you know were um, extolling the virtues of things mm -hmm. like Google Docs and the ways that we're yeah. able to collaborate beyond just you know with FTP sites to be really organized about who's doing what mm -hmm. you know because it, it takes a certain amount of you know, you're planning an organization, particularly oh, yeah, if, we, yeah. if we don't have a music supervisor, that we're self-supervising. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, so I'm in I'm in Venice at the moment, mm -hmm. and um, I've got my setup there, and you guys are both around here. I think we have kind of similar setups, similar sounds. We use more or less the same libraries, give a bit usually. You know, I heard, I remember one thing that Eric played me early on, and I just kind of went, wait, what was that sample? And he said, I think that's from Albion. I don't have that. <laughs> like, oh, by Albion. <laughs> like, no, no, same yeah, thing. Like, where, what fruit is that? Yeah, you know, it, so you're always kind of yeah, comparing. It, the, it's yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's good. I mean, that's that because I mean, it's more information that yeah. I'm actually getting from two very good composers and very good people with you know a lot of senses. You know, because this is all about your taste and you know what is going to be your final product. So of course, you know, during all this process, I learned a bunch of stuff about Joel and you know keep learning a bunch of stuff about Freddie. So yeah. I love that. I mean, because you, yeah, but you know, my Freddie. What bass clarinet is that? It's something great. How you you know, and then you bring that to your tail, and then right. next time it's mm -hmm. gonna be better. You know? So it's and great. Also, I think you know, we watch we watch each other grow as oh, yeah. musician yeah. because yeah. you know I remember when I started Yu-Gi-Oh, I was probably the newest of the bunch, and you know what I was writing at the beginning was not all good. I'm gonna be <laughs> you know, blunt about it. Um, had potential, but you know, so I think you know, there's this growth that you can see, and after we did the cartoons. Um, for a few years, and as Freddie put it, it was super intense. Yeah, you know, I, I actually attribute that as my ten thousand hours. Mm -hmm. You know, the Malcolm Gladwell thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, this is really your stomping ground when you are having to write for animation where something changes feasibly every second, <laughs> and you have to hit it every yeah, yeah. Every, on the frame. You know, th I don't think there's any better training. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, but it's a really good training. It's good yeah, training, yeah. and you know, as Freddie said, for you know, for kids' school, for kids' entertainment school of music, right. they also, you know, I mean, to get a lot of credit. I mean, they were pushing in melodies. So we, the three of us, you know, like melodies. I mean, you sometimes you hear a score that is just nothing in there. Yeah, yeah. So, and in my opinion, that's one is the most important character in music. So you know, for we sure, were yeah. pushed yeah. Yeah. to write themes. You know, write a theme, and you know, and make it bigger. And 
yeah. bigger yeah. orchestration. Bigger, yeah. So, you know, you learn a lot of orchestration and, you know, I need to orchestrate, you know, huge. I need to write fast and I also need to do really good memorial teams, you know, for tomorrow. Right. So yeah. you're going to learn. I mean, you definitely. So that's, you know, I guess that Joel or Frey were, was mentioning when, okay, a film is here. Oh, vacation. You know, everything okay. <laughs> now let's analyze the stuff. The rest, you know, just do it and it's an amazing training. Yeah. yeah. I, I did uh, a film recently. It was really my, f my first feature film. And I was amazed because they had like, a piece of music and then they'd have space <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then people would talk and do some acting and then they'd have another piece of music and you know these pieces of music could be like a minute apart and, and, and you didn't have to hit every frame you didn't have to hit every frame like, so they would say you know can you get this done you know in like three weeks it's like yeah <laughs> done tonight if you want to <laughs> so yeah it's a different it's just a different you know mentality but it's been good education. Good yeah, education, and they're, yeah. they're 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 particularly picky too. They're very 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 picky about the music, and, and, and so you 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 know you you can get lazy there. You really have to work every yeah. every yeah. do everything. Yeah. They don't miss a trick. Yeah, yeah, they don't miss anything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's talk about uh, Kingdom of Plants. I, uh, explain because it hasn't it hasn't aired in the U.S. yet. Well, so. I'll give you the, the the origin. So this is um um the second uh, of uh, projects that have come about from a company called Atlantic Productions, mm -hmm. who are based in the UK, uh, run by uh, Anthony Geffen, who's a very prominent producer who uh, cut his teeth in the BBC, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and as his company's grown and they've made new connections that go beyond um, the Discovery Channels and the History Channels and uh, National Ge Geographics, um, they became interested in doing 3D stuff and being right. on that cutting edge. And um, Anthony Geffen was able to talk and uh, to talk Sir David Attenborough out of retirement. Really, he'd mm -hmm. been in retirement for twenty years since his wife died, mm -hmm. and um, and kind of resurrected him to do a film uh, which we did last year. Same editor, same exact team, same director as uh, Kingdom of Plants, and this was called um, Flying Monsters 3D, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was groundbreaking in many ways as, as a 3D documentary. Um, it won the BAFTA for best documentary and David Attenborough really became and has become a champion of the use of 3D not as a gimmick but as some way but as a way of really creating an immersive experience right. in a documentary and so it's a very viable use of 3D now he championed he was commissioner of the BBC when color television started huh. so that was him yeah. that pushed that forward when everyone else was saying what do we need color for black and white's <laughs> fine <laughs> and now he's you know doing the same push, thing. Being, pushing 3D doing the same thing so um, the team got back together in um, in the business side of it this solidified into what is now called Colossus Pictures which mm -hmm. is um, Rupert and Murdoch and, um, uh, and Sky 3D getting together Atlantic Productions to do large-scale 3D documentaries, um, it may go beyond documentaries at some point. That will that will have both um, a television appearance on Sky's 3D channel, which mm -hmm. is all over Europe, and eventually will come to the US, and also have a life as a 3D IMAX film. Okay. Uh, usually, as 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the dual way that they do these things. Um, this one. Um, it's uh, about the Royal Botanical Gardens at Kew, which are the greatest botanical gardens in the world. It has the biggest collection mm -hmm. um, of plants, um, of seeds um, in existence. And as you can imagine, it's a very long-term project uh, to film uh, plants going through all their life stages, uh, through the various seasons. It took, an, it took a year. Uh, yeah, to imagine. do production, which for a documentary is quite a lot, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and, and we're not just talking like pre-production, I think we're talking a year of Filming, being there yeah. with a 3D camera um, and pioneering something that hasn't been done much before, which is macro 3D. So you're filming at close quarters, mm -hmm. plants in time-lapse, uh, and doing it in 3D in a way that is effective and hopefully watchable right. on a big screen. So lots of, you know, breaking new ground. Um, and so, uh, happily, because of the you know, successes of the previous project, they came back to, to me um, to get this done. And um, I contacted these two and said, you know, I'd like you to uh, get involved if you're interested. And so we started talking. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big task. It's three oh, episodes, yeah. a lot of music, 
and it needed to be done you know to the highest standards because this is a landmark series mm -hmm. um, and both the production company and ourselves felt you know we need to we need to give this the best that we can you know we really want to do something special um, here because it's such a beautiful project you know mm -hmm. and I and I think just as a, you know just as watching it it, it um, you know you'll be able to see it it's, it's just it's great stuff to write music for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, for, for me, I like writing music for like a nebula, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a plant opening, or something. Like right. that. You know, these are they're evocative and they're inspiring ideas, and and um, so I mean that's that's the the beginnings of the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what what is? I mean, I, I'm a huge you know nature documentary. I grew up on Discovery Channel and mm. Planet Earth, and it's just uh, beautiful. But in your guys' opinions, what is the function of music in a nature documentary? Like, what is what is music supposed to do? And you're especially with plants because you're you're not looking at animals. Like I, you with, with animals, I always mm -hmm. you know I get connected with the eyes. The the, the the cameraman will get these looks from the animals, and that's where mm -hmm. I think there's some sort of personification going with that emotion, human emotion. But with plants, it's all you know. There's no face. There's <laughs> just leaf and and stem and you know mm -hmm. the anatomy of a plant. So how do you get to those emotional not pardon mm. the pun the roots of it mm -hmm. so yeah. I would say it's, it's similar to, to, to in my opinion to do um, like animal documentary mm -hmm. we, we, the way we approach it we, we thought about having themes for different um, different plants actually mm -hmm. so, uh, you know like I remember doing the cactus theme but you know like okay this plant is important we're gonna have we're gonna talk a little bit about that we, we, we might repeat it in other scenes so we start thinking about that plant like as a character mm -hmm. in the movie and uh, so you know you start going from there and the other thing there's uh, there's no action you know mm -hmm. it's just dialogue and the, and when you see the plant a lot of slow motion so the music really have to to drive uh, and, and keep you entertained mm -hmm. so that's very very important and uh, so you have to you have to keep it fresh you have to keep the the the, the the you know the emotion that most the atmosphere mm -hmm. that you that, that, that you want to represent like each movie for example has a is a is a different part of the of the of the garden you know like this one is like all the wet plants or all, all the so so you kind of have to somehow uh, tell that you yeah. know say that in the music so there's some of that going on too um, and um, yeah it's, a, it's 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 very similar I, I i would say the main thing is just to keep people entertained mm -hmm. and because again you're watching plants grow right and that's what you're doing there's yeah. a cue that what it's doing that was pretty much <laughs> watching a, a tree just growing up mm -hmm. that's a cue two minutes cue so you have to make it interesting but it's but it's so beautiful it's so you know to watch it like like you say it's, you know it's a, uh, you come with nice things too because it's very very yeah. inspiring you know and um and of course they're using 3D and different types of uh, photography which is going to make it more visually stimulating. Do, do, do those affect or uh, inspire you guys to write different music? Whether it, are you, were, were you ever at a point writing for 3D? Um, were you ever viewing the, the dailies or there anything? Were you viewing in 3D or were you just getting everything 2D? I guess you're aware it's going to be in 3D uh -huh. and it's going to be huge and you're going to see it on a big screen and all the stuff but in my, in my case, mm -hmm. in this part, I mean, not really. I mean, I just was following the story and you know, trying to imagine, okay, this is going to be huge so this is what's going to be happening with the music. Yeah. So, um, you know, just to, 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 to keep, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the idea that Freddie had, it, you know, you're bringing life to this plant right. because you know you see it like that. You know, you see Sir David actually speaking about it. You know, you know he's a very passionate <laughs> guy. I mean, the way he speaks. I mean, you really get immersed into that. But you know, when a plant is to start moving, so you know to understand what is happening. Yes, and you know, start writing the music into that, and you actually tell the story of how the plant is moving. You know, you know there are different scenes. It's not really you know there are some bats going on, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. flying around, and then the really slow motion. There is a you know amazing visuals, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, in my in, in my particular, I you know, 3D probably was one or twice in my head. The rest of the stuff, I just really was in the story and you know, seeing you know, 2D and that's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, never change really the approach. Right. I mean, I already knew that the concept was like that, so you know, the score was written mm -hmm. knowing that it's going to be 3D. But you know, other than that, it's just writing music. It's going to work with what I have over there. I I um just on the 3D thing. Uh, I did get to see, you know, it, when they were cutting it in London, and uh, 
on you know kind of a, I guess a 42 inch TV and you mm -hmm. put your silly glasses mm -hmm. on and and it you know to the early stages so it hasn't been graded properly so right. it looks like one of those postcards yeah, yeah you know, like turn it like yeah. Yeah. there's something there and there's something mm -hmm. there yeah. um, but you know you can see that it's it's going to be very beautiful but I, I I wrestled a little bit with this question of 3D music mm -hmm. when I when I did the, the previous film because you know I had this genius idea that since the film isn't going to be 3D, that I'm going to try to find a way to make music 3D for yeah. it. So I thought about it, I thought about it, and I thought, okay, so how am I going to do this? And every time I, I, I kind of looked at, well, what, how, what is the music that we do anyway? And then it just hit me, like, music is 3D. Yeah. It's completely mm -hmm. 3D, and maybe more than 3D, because it does exist at multiple levels, both in time and place. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got melodies and harmonies coexisting, and... I couldn't think of any way to go beyond that right. that hasn't already been thought <laughs> yeah, of. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think except to be sensitive to the fact that, you know, that it might end up on a big screen mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. and that you want to have that immersiveness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, so I think, yeah, we, we write music to, yeah, to bring it to life and to try to understand what flavors these characters, these plant characters would yeah. have. So, you know, the cactus one, we had a lot of conversations with like, we want to use this cue mm -hmm. from episode one for this one, but it was too wet. Mm -hmm. So exactly. we started talking about our music as being too wet or too dry, mm -hmm. or this needs to be drier, it needs to be more cactus-like. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there was the fungus cue mm -hmm. as well. It has this a kind of a creeping quality and it's not entirely sinister, but it's not entirely nice yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's something twisted about it. Yeah, it's, you know, so, you know, it's, it's gauging, um, Emotionally, you know, um, you're giving the character to that plant. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what you're and, doing, and, and that's proof that actually, really, you give character because I mean, well, okay, as you said, mm -hmm. let's reuse this gray cue that were for the wet uh, episode into the dry one, and you put it over there. It's music, you know. We have similar palettes so of what we're doing, but that doesn't doesn't work. Work so, some, yeah. some, you know. You make you made it wet. <laughs> okay, well, let's just dry it out. Yeah. Dry it out. Yeah, Take exactly. the hair dryer on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So some of the characters even have like a like a funny personality. I remember yeah. some were more quirky, you know, looking like oh, so you want to do something a little bit more. Yeah, so you feel oh, okay. So it's, uh, oh, some are a little more uh, uh, some dark, very very dark. Very dark. Yeah, yeah, you'll uh, see those. So dark, really yeah. dark sometimes. There's a fungus that takes over. You'll see it in the in the film eventually. There's a fungus that takes over the brain of ants <laughs> and, I've heard of that, yeah. yeah and so and it, it it possesses them and it makes them climb which is not their normal behavior up branches to the highest point and then um, a spore it kills them and a spore shoots out of their head yeah. um, and then it spreads spores and it does mm -hmm. that so that it can spread far and wide which you wouldn't do from that so that's yeah. you know kind of sinister yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's almost science fiction yeah, yeah. it's amazing yeah. I mean, you see that yeah, you know, it's actually so. quite a few okay, scenes like that so it's, it's very it has a lot of deepness yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so you guys you, you're handed this project how do you split up the workload how do you decide who does what does anybody say oh I want to do this or I'd rather do that or do you just kind of do it, you know, just mix it <laughs> up and know, just you know, throw, you know, deal the cards. Yeah. I, I would like Joel to answer that question because <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. You know, he knows our styles and the way they were, but, you know, when we came, you know, he, of course, as you know, he rolled the product to the table and said, okay, you know, let's do the sporting session. Okay, Fred, I think that you're pretty good at all this, you know, because probably he heard a bunch of, you know, uh, sound design, things like that, mm -hmm. and then, you know, Ellie, why you don't do this beautiful cue? And okay, well, then we start splitting, and then I think that I end up doing more of sound effects <laughs> type of cute thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, that was the way to split it up. But you know, I would like you know, Joel to answer that that question just because of yeah, that. I think and the that, perception yeah. that you got and how that changed, you know, probably. Yeah, I think you know, initially, um, the for me, what was important was firstly that we divided up equitably, so mm -hmm. we each got. Um, a number of minutes that is equivalent, mm -hmm. so you know we keep parity there. Um, that we've got each got cues that are interesting enough right. that you know they're going to inspire us enough. But definitely, I I came at it thinking, okay, you know, let's play to our strengths. Um, right. And um, uh, Freddie did a bunch of stuff for the <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh movie. There was kind of 
immortalized in all our minds because you know they were very sophisticated kind of organic textures and effects that were I guess largely guitar based yeah, yeah like guitar yeah. per se you know and I'm not a guitarist I'm keyboard yeah. and percussion uh -huh. and and so every time these keys would come up they were kind of textures <laughs> and stuff like <laughs> so I'd say well Freddie you know would you, would you want to take that one on so in the end so we started like that and then in the end I kind of gave up because um, you know who am I to tell them what's you know what's right for them to do or right. not you know they they're used to figuring it out between them so what we did from then on is basically saying all right I'm gonna do these kind of I'm gonna do these cues because you know that that works for me um, and then these cues I just you know we just put it down it's up to you guys to figure out which one does it and yeah. just let me know mm -hmm. so that if there are any revisions that come back from London I just know who to send them to right and it worked out fine I think you know the, I, these guys don't need me to tell them what their strengths are and I think also um, being typecast or typecasting oneself mm -hmm. isn't always a productive way of doing things mm -hmm. because if you put yourself you know in a place of writing something that you haven't written before and you're not necessarily comfortable with conceivably interesting things will happen yeah so exactly. and I think that's what did happen yeah. is that all of us were pushed pushed in different cues a little bit outside our natural field because right. there was a lot of different styles and and I think yeah that's where the fun begins yeah. you mm -hmm. know? And, yeah. and, and and you know that that I think they were uh, uh, talking about this at the beginning of the conversation uh, I knew that whatever cues you know were assigned everybody could do a great job I mean right. probably a little different approach but you know at that point you know there are many many different things many characters mm -hmm. really you feel that confidence that it's okay I mean you do that one I mean it's gonna be great at mm -hmm. the end at least you know we feel they were in the same track in the mm -hmm. same page you know regarding yeah. that mm -hmm. so it came to that point like you said you know I mean you do that one you all yeah, I think that when we start splitting Q it was mostly uh, at some point it's just a matter of, of splitting the times the okay, time. you do that not a matter of minutes Okay, choose this one. So then you, this one is longer and yeah. can compensate. We mm -hmm. didn't even think about that. At some point, okay, I had this cues. He has this cues. I use that, and I feel, oh, you know what? I, I'm, I have too much, uh, you know, like yeah. too much sound design. Yeah. Stuff. Like, let's, 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 <laughs> let's trade. Let's yeah. trade. Yeah. So we start trading. Yeah. Exactly. And then all you know, so so then we, we kind of did uh, everything. Yeah, I think it kind of even yeah. out yeah. pretty yeah. well. Yeah. And you know, and then you know, Freddie would, for example, upload to us. He had done a bunch of. Uh, 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 flute effects that you guys mm. had recorded yeah. and guitar effects and things like that he uploaded them then we can, I could incorporate them in one of my cues and mm. stuff like that so yeah, yeah. It's, it, know, we listen to each other's stuff you know what it's really fun you know like and, and, and then it, it's something like uh, Joel did what uh, really nice cue that they love over there and they say hey guys you know they really like it because I mean you write I mean what's a lot of music right it's writing and writing and writing so you know of course there will be some cues that they hear I mean this is amazing so then you take that and you're not going to copy that. You're probably going to mm -hmm. implement that a little bit into yeah. the next cue that you write. Yeah. Because, I mean, that cue is already written and it's written by Joel. Right, and it's right, his right. deal. But, you know, then you bring it over here home. And then, okay, let me incorporate this idea that he created or that they love. And then, you know, that's how the score starts, you know, you know, sounding like one. You know, something like a really, you know, well-reading, you know, storytelling type of score. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Like, the first cues that we wrote, I think, were the most different ones. Mm -hmm. Because each one took a... You know, we have a, a, a in our minds what we wanted to, to, mm -hmm, to, to right. do. And uh, Joe did something, I think you worked in the main title first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Ellie did another cue. It was, a, I don't know, a different, different approach. I did something a little more so designed it because it was. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then we hear each other and uh, the more, oh, you know, I like what Ellie did here. <laughs> I like what Joe did here and, and vice versa. And at some point at the end, it, you know, it just sounded like oh, okay. This, this yeah, is yeah. From the movie, right? Yeah. We, we 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 got more and more integrated. But very natural that of yeah. You know, and that's what you know. We barely spoke about it. It just came, you know. It just came by itself. You know, I mean, just like oh, this is great. It's, you know, quick question here, and then you know you. Got oh, it result. sounds too like ah, oh, what sounds did you use here? Oh, yeah, let's yeah. Go <laughs> <on>. <laughs> I mean, the whole. Co I mean, it feels like a cohesive score and everything. And uh, there's so many people out there who are against collaboration which I don't know why there are a lot of people who are like oh it should be one composer and even the academy has these stupid rules for the, the score categories but I always feel that film in any aspect should be collaborative I mean there's no such thing as you know it says the director is uh, this film but you know there's the assistant director there's, I mean it's not just it's everybody's working together and I feel like music benefits from that do you would you would you say that it had like a band Type quality because y'all y'all come from not necessarily band because often the bands have a, a hierarchy within themselves. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always work so well. Um, but um, you know, in terms of collaboration, uh, I think 
Firstly, there's a practicality to it because when you're presented with a volume of work that is just simply not achievable right. by one person in that space of time. You know, so you, it has to be a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And um, but I've had collaborations that didn't work. Yeah. Um, and I'll, and what they were is simply they were not people um, who were able to deliver to the spec mm -hmm. that I would deliver to. And right. so when a client is coming to me and I'm bringing mm -hmm. people on board, yeah. I'm I'm required to deliver whoever wrote it music that. I would be proud of, right. you know, and that they would expect of me. And when that didn't come through from from various writers that I was working with over time, um, uh, it was frustrating and it was also a waste of money because I would end up either rewriting the pieces mm -hmm. or having to be on the phone with them so many times to, uh, to ask for revisions until they get it. Yeah. That at that point, I, I said to myself, I've, you know, I could have just done it myself yeah, and I've spent good. half my budget on you know, on outside composers. And that happened enough times that I stopped doing it and I just said, that's it, I'm not doing any more collaborative projects. Mm -hmm. And then it occurred to me that I could get in touch with <laughs> Elik and Freddie and this was for a Shark, shark Week thing mm -hmm. and, and I had an entirely different experience because I didn't need to, you know, be, a, a, you know, uh, a supervising and what I got back was, of course, you know, absolutely top class. Yeah didn't need any changes or hardly at all or whatever and I could just have that faith that you know that I could rely on them and go into it as instead of like a manager of you know more junior composers I could go into it more as partners mm -hmm. and I can present them as partners to uh, the client and so uh, in both cases um, you know they got to know that Elik and Freddie were working on these things and uh, and then on one occasion, I wasn't able to do a, a show. The first people they asked for is, yeah. "Are Elik and Freddie available yeah. for the Egypt unwrap?" Yeah, the Egypt they did the whole series yeah. themselves, you know. So it, it brings them into the foreground as mm. well. So it's very, very different to that idea of you know ghostwriter and you keep them no, at yeah, bay yeah. because you want all that credit. I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> I want the project to be as good as possible, and it's much more fun we can, when we can work on it as a partnership, and it's much more relaxing. Oh, yeah. Quite yeah, frankly, yeah. it's just less stressful. So now I'm all for it. And um, and I think as in all things is life, it's 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 not about collaboration, not not a, or not collaboration. It's about who are you going to collaborate with? Right. Quite simply, yeah. um, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and and you know, of course, every project is different, and you know, yeah. some projects are real. Like a, it's not that you get attached, or like a really personal to you, but you know, I think that. Also, you know, that experience that you always mentioned, you know, I've been working with Freddie for more than 10 years already in the same way that we work with Joel here. Mm -hmm. So we understand the process very much and we love it. I mean, it's very effective. I mean, the, the, the way that, you know, because when we when you know, going back really quickly to Four Kids Entertainment, we got us the junior kids. I mean, we're the kids over there, yeah. we were too. So we were delivering faster than everybody <laughs> else because we were coming from both of us and we we're splitting queues. So that, you know, put us to speed. But of course, there are some projects that, you know, it's your project, it's mm -hmm. your, you know, you, you want to put your heart, your own mentality over mm -hmm. there and just actually build it from, you know, zero to, to the end. Mm -hmm. But there are some others that if you find the right people, as you all said, because it's, I, 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 I want to keep repeating this, it's not easy. It's not really easy. Yeah. It's not easy because you're putting three different personalities to actually you know, create something, bring, you know, a creative work. But so, so, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm, you know, I always say this, and I think they were pretty lucky and, you know, works fantastic. When the project is there, I will say, you know, why not? I mean, we have a the formula that works pretty well. Yeah, yeah. And you, you all said it's really ra relaxing when it actually makes sense. You know, it's the best of the world, you know, because, yeah. I mean, sometimes it, it, the music, um, you know, just to, to, to finish the, the idea, Sometimes, you know, deadlines, yes, I mean, even if us, you know, we are used to big deadlines and, you know, to write really fast, sometimes you will sacrifice a little bit the quality of what you're doing. I mean, even if you don't want, I mean, you only have 24 hours a day and you, some of those you need to sleep a little bit, you right, know, take right. some rest. So this way, when things are so, you know, really, really need limited in time and you still want to deliver quality, Yes, I mean, okay, let me spend more time in this queue. Hold on a second. I really want to listen tomorrow, mm -hmm. all the day after tomorrow. You know what? Let me remix this stuff, and I, I just want to rewrite this because I'm not 100%. I'm 98, but I just want to get to 100%. So this type of collaboration will give you the opportunity to do that. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And like I said also, it's not, there's no exclusivity to it because we can come together to work on a project 
when it suits us and when we are available. Right. And at the same time, yeah. we all have our, our pet projects that yeah. hopefully yeah. will help us as individual composers, mm -hmm. you know, reach our own, you know, our own goals and yeah, our own hopefully not notoriety and stuff like that, and learn and then come back, you know, for for other things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I I think there's a lot of value to it. Oh it did, yeah. yeah, it definitely yeah. is. But I've also talked to composers who. Um, uh, I've interviewed a lot of because video games they have a lot of sometimes they'll just have a composing team of four yeah. or five composers and I talked to uh, uh, Lauren Balf who did uh, the new Assassin's Creed game and he did it and Jesper Kid was um, he did all the previous ones mm. and I said so what was it like working with him and he goes oh I've never met him <laughs> and they've never met they never talked to each other so I said well how do you guys because the, the they released the, the soundtrack it's three discs worth of music and mm. it's a lot of music and I'm saying so how do you create a cohesiveness it's like well you just have to be you just need to tell yourself you need to write better than what he's writing and he's going to be doing the same thing so you guys are, are on, the, on the match. Would that process have worked for this? Would you, if you guys never met, would that process yeah. would that work? I, I, you know, I think we speak to each other through our music, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how it happened from when we were in New York. You know, we were working on Yu-Gi-Oh! for a couple of years. <laughs> the first time I met them was the premiere. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. this thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Just for the hell of it, you know, they didn't yeah. fly us over, cheap bastards. But <laughs> me and my wife came over because we thought it'd be nice, you know, yeah. to come to this event. And, you know, they threw a little lunch and lunch I got to meet Alec and Freddie. Yeah. Um, but I think we've been communicating through the music and listening to each other. And I think, you know, um, that that competitive aspect to, to it is also there in the sense that mm -hmm. you know I think it was one of the first things I wrote to uh, Elec because he wrote the very first cue before they even picture locked and he sent it back to me and I listened to it and thought he set the bar pretty high <laughs> <laughs> you know well, now what am I going to do right. you know so I think there is that there it's not it's um it's a constructive mm -hmm. you know kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, competition in the sense of like it it shows you, you know, like we can't slack off mm -hmm. because, like, we're all we're all on it here, you know. Yeah. We're, you know, no matter what other things we're doing, and sometimes juggling multiple projects, like, you know, if we're all doing stuff at this level, it'll work. If if somebody's not pulling their way, yeah. it's gonna it's gonna be conspicuous. Right. So, yeah. so I think you know there is that as well. I you know, um, so I think the collaboration could work, you know, on the musical level, even if we'd never met. But mm -hmm. I think it's a lot more fun when we can get together and enjoy the process and eat tacos. <laughs> I also think that uh, it, it might depend on the kind of project mm -hmm. if it, that that approach work or not. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that video games, it, you know, I, I can see that working well. Actually, we, we've done something like that mm -hmm. in the past. And yeah, and it worked. But it's all, all, also a little bit uh, because of the music that you're doing, the project you're doing, the docu documentary tend to work nice too for that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing, uh, let's say, a small movie, like an independent movie uh, where the sound is very, very, very particular. You know, uh, let's say you're scoring the whole movie with, uh, with an accordion mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and percussion, something like that. Is, you know, you came with that idea, you work on it, it, it yeah. it's so personal mm. that then it might be, uh, it, it, I, I'm sure if I, if I bring you and Ellie and Tabrigo, it's gonna work because I really trust the guy. But most of the time, that would be, uh, very strange, you know, because yeah. that's that's that may be your style right. that you wanna you wanna show. Okay, for this project, I wanna show exactly what is what what is what I would do if I wasn't doing a film. You know what what really I wanna do. You know, each one of us have different different uh, um, approaches, approaches for to think, and and that's gonna reflect more in that in in something that you use more like you know, like you said, like a pet yeah. project that you're working on. So for this kind of project, uh, maybe you know, it's not the ideal situation. Um, if you really want to make us feel like you hear, oh yeah, that's Freddy or that's Ellie, that's, mm -hmm. that, that's yeah, this yeah. guy. Yeah. That I can hear it totally because that's, that's, his voice, that's, that's his voice. And it might be a little bit more personal. In video games, I think it tends to have certain kind of sound that even though it, each video game is going to be different, some, some of them have, okay, I can see it's, it's, it's a, something more approachable by more composer than mm -hmm. something that's just very, very unique of very unique one too. voice, you know. Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, we covered a lot. I think uh, we have. This has one of been. This has been an amazing conversation, and uh, thank you so much for all of you uh, for sitting down here and talking thank with you. me. It's a. Uh, um, it's a great honor, and it's. It's been. I think it's one of the, the most enriching. I think things that we're going to be able to put on the site. So. Well, thank you. So, yeah, 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 well, and we'll keep you posted about it. I mean, uh, I think it, it's its arc will probably be 
um, a release in May, mm -hmm. um, and I think they'll go out quite quickly in a row, the three episodes, um, and they're at the moment cutting the IMAX mm -hmm. uh, version of it, which is, it, it's great because, you know, they're really going to take the choice pieces of it, and, um, uh, and then I think what we hope to do is, if they can give us a little bit more budget, is to go back and remix some of the cues in 5.1. Oh, wow. Because, yeah. you know, we we recorded some really good live stuff oh, yeah. and, yeah. you know, we could kind of bring it to life even more yeah. and so that it holds its own in a, in a big theatre format. Right. Um, and then uh, that will be, the IMAX will be uh, distributed hopefully around about November uh, by National Geographic mm -hmm. and it'll be, you know, presumably like um, Flying Monsters, it'll go uh, at the California Science Center yeah. and the Smithsonian and uh, the Liberty State Park Center in New York and you know um, the, the major kind of museum type IMAXs mm -hmm. you know uh, in the past they were just hoping they'd get in all the IMAXs yeah, but yeah. now everybody's doing 3D IMAX so yeah. it's very yeah. hard to get it placed yeah right you know in your you're fighting you know, for your a big spot, ones yeah. yeah so so that's kind of where, where it'll go and we'll keep you posted about that and maybe if there's a, a screening out here we'll we'll get you to come along yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah, great. okay you're doing an amazing job as I said you know it's great you know and, and, and your love for film music you know fits over here because I mean it's great to to have somebody who's gonna listen to these three guys you know talking I mean, we talk a lot as you can see yeah, so yeah. you know it's great that you listen and great that you enjoy you know actually uh -huh. The the, the 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 answers that you're giving so that yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, nice. really, really nice. Really, nice. really. Also, yeah. congratulate you on your site. It's amazing, yeah. and I think you are doing great for the film music community, and it's gonna grow really fast. I mean, I'm sure of that. So, yeah, yeah. that means a lot. Thank you.